We introduced Cauchy sequences in a previous lesson, and I'll leave a link to that lesson in the description. We would like to prove that a sequence is Cauchy if and only if it is convergent. To begin doing that, we'll first prove that if a sequence is convergent, then it is Cauchy. And I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson proving that if a sequence is Cauchy, then it is convergent. So in total, we will have proven that a sequence converges if and only if it is Cauchy. The ideas in this proof are pretty straightforward. Since we'll be trying to show that a sequence is Cauchy, we're trying to show that it's terms get arbitrarily close together. But since we're working with a convergent sequence, we know that its terms are getting arbitrarily close to the limit, and we can force them to get close enough to the limit so that they're also really close to each other. We begin our proof with an arbitrary sequence AN that is convergent. It converges to A, and we're taking an arbitrary real number epsilon greater than zero. By definition, to prove that this convergent sequence is also Cauchy, we need to guarantee the existence of some natural number, big N, so that any two terms of our sequence after the big nth term are within epsilon of each other. What we'll do now is work with this expression a little bit, basically doing some scratch work, which will show us how we can guarantee that it's less than epsilon. We'll actually be able to just leave this scratch work as part of the proof. It's going to lead us to figuring out how we can find this big N value, how we can guarantee it exists. So once we do this scratch work, we'll be able to add in a line here describing how we can guarantee our desired big N exists. Since we're trying to show that this expression is less than epsilon, we would like to have a little bit more control over its value. One thing we have a lot of control over is the distance between terms of the sequence and the limit a. We can make those as close as we want. So we might like to introduce the limit a into this expression somehow. We may think to use a strategy that we've used in several previous real analysis proofs. What we can do is just add and subtract the limit into this expression. That way we're not actually changing the value. So we've just added an a and subtracted an a. Now we've got the limit in our expression, but since we basically just added zero, we haven't changed its value. The extra nice thing about this is now we have some addition in this absolute value expression, which means we can split this expression across that addition using the triangle inequality theorem. By the triangle inequality theorem, we know the absolute value of this sum must be less than or equal to the sum of the absolute values. And remember that we're okay with making the expression bigger because we're trying to show that it's less than epsilon. So if this bigger thing can be shown to be less than epsilon, then of course the original expression is less than epsilon. This expression might be a little bit bigger, but it's pretty nice because we have a bunch of control over the value of this expression. Both of these expressions represent distances between terms of the sequence and the limit. Thus, since we assumed that a n converges to a, we can make both of these as small as we want. Since we would like this sum to be less than epsilon, we just want to make both of these less than epsilon over two. So this is our missing line. Since a n is converging to a, we know there exists a natural number big N, so that every term of the sequence after the big nth term is within epsilon over two of the limit. Since epsilon is greater than zero, epsilon over two is greater than zero, so we're guaranteed this is true by the definition of a n converging to a. Thus, when we take terms of the sequence a n and a m after the big nth term, we are guaranteed that this is less than epsilon over two, and we're guaranteed that this is less than epsilon over two. 
Again, that's because both of these expressions are distances between terms of the sequence and the limit after the big nth term. So both of these are less than epsilon over two, thus their sum is less than epsilon over two plus epsilon over two, and of course epsilon over two plus epsilon over two is epsilon. So we began with a convergent sequence and showed there must exist a natural number, big N, so that the distance between any two terms of the sequence after the big nth term is less than epsilon. Thus, by definition, every convergent sequence is Cauchy. <laughs> mistake, mistake.